Hi, uh, welcome back all of you and Anna here and then uh, we are into the next day's uh, program of this uh, Fusion Inventory Implementation. So we are into min-max, then uh, we have done it at the sub level. So let me go and sign it. I'm not still working on ESBZ actually. Uh, <clears throat> you are likely to get a new instance on Monday, I think probably. So once when it comes, you sit up, sit and then uh, create the complete structure creation and then start to practice each and every concept. <clears throat> so uh, if you go there and then have a look at it. <clears throat> If you go to this place, I will now go to the supply chain execution of I know that you can't I will now go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management of the you can say. Go to the inventory management. And then I am in a T011 org. <clears throat> So the org is not coming here actually, fine. So let us now set up the profile. So once when you set up the profile, the org will be coming automatically over here. Fine. Click on set up and maintenance. And then you go to the manage inventory profile and then set up the org. So click on it. Go to the search. Go there. Manage. EMB profile percentage. So go to the manage inventory profile options. And then here, uh, I will now search all. Fine. There is one default org is there. Default or inventory, or so there is a profile for default or can I query on the default? Uh, PDF and then try to query now. Thank you for search. I'm giving half of it, right? Uh, it has to start on the tool, it's not a unique tool. Uh, interlock, let me just press some inventory transactions. Inventory transaction creation. Uh, default or the inventory default or ID. The one from the left corner. No, add it. Click on it. At the site level, let me add. <coughs> so go there at the site level. And then I have now put my username over here. And site and user levels are two levels actually. Go there, click on it. Go to this place. The site level for the user, I have to get it. Oh, not the site level. So I had to go to the user level. So I had to go to the user level, not the site level. <clears throat> so go to the user level, and then I'm not to P01, and then you attack. The user level, I have to set it up and drop it down. If it is not coming, if you're tabbing out, it is not coming, I choose the uh, Drop down and then make a search. Make a search. <coughs> I will not choose the EMP one more here. <coughs> and then the value is what? P011. Uh, if I write T, it will come on. T0. T, T, like that only at And T011 is coming. So that's it, fine. At the user level, we are doing it now. So we are now set up the T011 and we're going to click on save and close. And then you always, what happens, you log out and you work. So come on, log on and log in so that the changes will be appeared. So click on confirm. So log in. The changes will be appeared. So once when you go into Inside, you can now see the default arg as a T011 for my user actually. I will now right click on the duplicate. <clears throat> right click on the duplicate. How multiple things over here. So in this place, if you go there, if you go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management, you can now see one moment request has been created and then it is ready for pick information that will be showing you over here. <clears throat> this place. The picks are not available. How come? It has been allocated now. I don't know why it's not coming here. 0.011. So we have one pick. We'll now have a look at the 
on our your moment tractors now fine what can do so sorry <clears throat> not this one cancel <clears throat> now go to this place sorry not here we'll now go to the supply chain management and go to the inventory management and we'll now go to the moment tractors over here now so go that so go to the manage moment tractors <clears throat> Item is a T zero one eight is the one I need to have. So click on search now. The system has created uh, two moment request, couple of moment request have been done. So they are all closed actually. We already transacted it all. Fine. Since we already transacted, nothing is pending over there. Actually. So we'll now go there is not done. So let's now go and then have a look at what happens. There. The stock now. Let's now go and then look at the stock. Only the manager can call this and then query for this item. T zero one eight. I click on search. <clears throat> so the entire stock is only thousand and nine. Fine, expand it. So forty five quantities is already come out. So sub inventory one. We have uh, what happens in SFSA fifty four is available. So let me perform a sub inventory transfer and then bring back the forty five over here and then we will now again run it. So let us now perform a sub inventory transfer and we will get. And now go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. And then let me perform a sub inventory transfers and then bring it over here. I click on it. I will now go to what a sub inventory transfers. I create a sub inventory transfer. So drop it down. We can even have a customized one like this now. Fine. I have not shown you about how to create a custom transaction source and try. Fine. I will not use sub inventory transfers. Now. Source is only manual now. Fine. Uh, uh, give a reasonable name so that when you take a report, it will be easily coming. It is not a Mandatory field actually. One plus no fine. I'll not put it. So item is what is zero one eight to the one. Can you get that item will be coming? So from SFSA I will now bring it to the main. So from SFSA I will now bring the forty five quantities. Fine. Uh, this one. Fine. So sub inventory locator is now asking for SFSA is not having any locators now. Fine. Uh, it is going to be the main now. Can you get sub inventory? So SFSA uh, sub inventory and locator. This is already the located field. This is the main. So yes, of course, I this one. I am not going to move forty-five quantities. And then always have a, a reasoning also. Fine. Give all the reason, uh, thing appropriate reasoning so that whatever when you take a report will be coming. So uh, from yes, of course, I is now fifty-four is there. I am not going to move forty-five to main. Fine. Click on submit now. Fine. So we can even run the min max again. Yo, done done it. If you go there, click on it. Let us now please search it. Fine. Go to the item. Now go to the item management. Now the item count is done. Query the item. T zero one eight the one. Give it that. And then let us now search for it. Now you can see that SFSA is now having only nine. So if you run the min max again, it will now sense that it has not gone below the stock actually. So we are going to run the min max again. So we will now go to the third one. Now find out what. Ah, this is the one. Third. Let me take right click and then duplicate for fourth one. Now, fine. Let me run the min max. <clears throat> I go to the tools and then I go to the schedule to process. Now I am going to run the min max again. Now, so click on the schedule to process. Print min is the one. Print min is the one. Fine, right, click on okay. <clears throat> so organization is a T zero one one. And you are having and coming sort by is inventory. So fine, go that. Is the sub inventory level planning? Fine, go that you want it. So I am now putting the sub inventory also. Otherwise, it will be running for all the sub inventories. Actually, fine. But the sub inventory will be coming. Go that you want it. And then I will now say restock the list. If the restock is equal to yes, it will be creating a replenishment output. Fine, we have configured it for sub inventory level. And so, uh, since the min max is the sub inventory, it will be. What happens? They're creating a moment request actually. Like this stock is less, and then the stock is less than nine, and so less than ten, and so naturally it be giving an order. Right? Click on something now, right? You will now find your moment request will be created, and then it will be allocated also. So creation of a moment request and allocation will be coming, getting completed in one go now. So moment request creation completion, and remember you have to have the transit times uh, properly defined actually, and then some other parameters basically. And then the receiving parameters must be set. Fine, everything must be proper actually. So then only what happens will be working properly actually. Otherwise, here itself it will not show you error actually. So click on it, and then you go to the what's called print uh, republishing it. You know, go to the output, and then you know, click on the republish now. On the republish button, go there. 
export to PDF. For exporting in a PDF, click on show all. Click on it. Here you can now see that there is an output. It doesn't show me the moment request actually. My 45 quantities are now come. Fine. Now, this 45, if I run it again, it will now contribute to the supply actually. So we have an on end of nine, and then the supply will be 45. And so the total available quantity will not, will not be nine, it will be 54. And so if I run it again, it will not show a value of zero actually. You can now see a value of zero or a quantity will be zero. Because Everything, a movement request is a basically a supply, a purchase requisition is a supply, a purchase order is a supply. So likewise, there are multiple sources of supplies which will be coming and then everything will be contributing to the supply quantity. Now, when I run it again, this 45 will be coming over here and then you can see the available quantity is 44 is more than 10. And so the reorder quantity will be zero actually if I again run it. If I go on and again run it, the reorder quantity will be zero. The one. Right. Re resubmit this concurrent lecture with the same parameters I'm resubmitting it. Select it and then click on this a bit. I'm submitting it again now with the same parameters, but this time there will not be any output at all because we already have this 45 model is created as a supply actually. So click on it. Go there. Print min max planning report the one. So click on republish now. Export a PDF. Go oh, there. Now you can see that what happens. The supply quantity is 45, and so the available quantity is 54, and so the reorder quantity is going to be zero actually. And then that will be reflecting on your uh, main uh, what happens your uh, listing also. If you go on and have a look at your <coughs> main, if you go to the overview now, and here it will be coming over here fine. on the on the info lets. Fine, you can now see this one. Fine. It's not visible. So if I refresh it, you can now see this one. Fine. I will now click on the home icon and then I have a look at the info lets actually for your R. And click on the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. It will be appearing over here fine, as a bending pick. So, ah, it is not coming. Okay. The moment request has now pushed into the interface tables of uh, inventory. Now we have to allocate the moment request. Right? We had to allocate the then only it will come. I'm not allocated it. So go there. Let me allocate the moment request actually. So here, if you go and see this now, I'm on schedule new process. Let me allocate the moment request. I will now say print move by which what happens the moment request will be allocated. So print moment request go there. Here, if you go and see on this play is now, uh, if you go and then if you go there, click on it. Let us now go on and have a look at the moment request over here. So go to the manage moment request and then have a look at it. The moment request has been created, but not yet allocated. T018 is the one you would have. And then click on search. Now, and you will not find a moment request from two lines. Of mine. It is a pre approved moment request, but it is not yet allocated. So the moment I allocate it, it will be coming over here. I am not going to allocate it. So once when it is created, it will now contribute towards the supply. Remember, even if you are not allocating it, it will be contributing towards the supply. So it is not contributing towards the supply. <clears throat> One second. Okay. <clears throat> it will be contributing towards the supply actually. So now it has to be allocated. So let us go there and then we will now run the print moment request. It is now allocated. So we are going to allocate it. Organization is a T011. I can leave it blank also. <clears throat> And then go there. I will now say release approved lines, but yes, this will now allocate the moment request. So the moment request, the what's called your print min max has now created a moment request as a pre-approved moment request. Now this is going to allocate. So click on submit, it will be allocating the moment request. Upon completion, it will be allocating it actually. Sometimes it may so happen that what happens if you go on and see this one? Uh, go to the fusion inventory documentation. So I will now say min max planning. Fine. Min max planning. So you might have run this moment request some one hour before. So it is already allocated. And then that stock is likely to come from this main to the shop floor. Now you want to run again. And at the time, I do not want to consider this existing 
moment request as a supply actually so it may so happen that the existing moment request should not be considered as a supply so they they it also happens fine so because one hour back it is already supposed to move no fine but uh, because of some operational constraints we are not moved it actually and then we are moving on the process we are not moving it so we the inventory in charge may like to see that this should not contribute towards the supply the, the existing what happens is your uh, moment request should not be contributing to it so when he runs it he will now disable this supply now, fine the existing uh, moment request will be disabling it and then doing it and that way you know fine. this is the, uh, another famous uh, scenario where uh, what happens is they will be running multiple moment request things so here you can see that the moment the moment request request board is now coming and we did not done fine we want to know how it it will be getting allocated <clears throat> so the allocation is now getting completed on this one it is now allocated on well, the how to cut this one. you can now see the allocation so it is now going to be allocated we now completed that what happens allocation actually right now this one sorry is completed the picks also pick confirmation is also completed so if you go down and then see it is also completed now fine mr2 is also completed and then here you can see mr3 is also completed now fine mother so all the previous ones actually <clears throat> it is on the different item actually i should have run it only for this no fine <laughs> item is t018 actually fine everything is now coming over you know uh, where is the item fine 17 is there in prox you can now see the t018 actually since i have not done this one so you can now see this is also completed fine the first moment request is already completed and go that it will be the second one so 108 fine mother open pics is now coming fine 45 and then 9 fine mother mr3 is coming fine mr3 is a different one actually so this is the one fine so this is the one so this is the automatic pick it is not allocated it it is not allocated so this is a moment request number this is all automatic moment request and this is a manual moment request that's okay that's a that's a different one altogether so the automatic picks is now completed now this will be appearing on the main uh, info let actually I close that part close it now close it we go there so if you go on and how look at it company if you go to the first one my moment request and take on the now by if you go to the main one here it will be appearing as this and this many picks are now pending i think you know see our know, picks which are pending so all these things will now contribute towards the supply actually fine it is not a confirmed actually it is only the created and the located actually there is open picks fine there is no coming on the main info let itself if you want to it will not show you this now it will show you this so the one one it has got two picks and then the one and the one which you are talking about so now the inventory in charge wants to run it again now at this time what are you saying is that i do not want the previous moment request supply to be as a supply so he will now say ignore it and then ignore that supply it is now pending because of certain operational reasons and then do not consider this as a supply so he is now going to run it again i'm not sure about how he is going to run it now. so click on it okay so what he will do is he will now go to the mount process and then click on the schedule new process and that he will now say print min max print min max will now put it so click on okay many companies operate like this go there sort by inventory item go <clears> there <throat> Leave all the items on the submit level. So here, if you go down, there are many supply and demand sources are available here. So depending upon the company's requirement, fine. Include moment request supply. Fine. He will now make it as no. That means what? The previous moment request which has not been confirmed, pick confirmed, will not be considered as a supply at all. If it is already pick confirmed, it will be coming into the stock. So here, what happens? We have got so many such supply sources and demand sources. Fine. Let me demand include VIP supply. so depending upon the requirement he will now make it as no and then run this min max actually. so so many supply and demand sources are there so he will now put this as a criteria over here now and then start to do it so this is a fine tuning and then uh, this will happen when you have a large amount of what happens the replenishments happening so and they will now schedule this process also fine right? the go to the process options and after having set up everything they will now use the process options and then they will now schedule this concurrently and what else next one okay now fine everything is coming and it's okay <clears throat> uh in the advance or not in the process options in the advanced you will now go on and schedule it. so go to the options and then click on the schedule now and advance you will now go to the schedule when as soon as possible are using a schedule and click on it you will now use a schedule for doing it so using a schedule frequency is what uh, how early fine 
kabadi and then time between the runs one hour or two hours or whatever it is you will now put the start and end date and accordingly what happens you will now do it so that every one hour it will now run automatically on so using a schedule will be very good so in advance so i am not doing it anymore so in reality so he will now set up everything <coughs> and that he will now do so go to the parameters now the parameters you will now set up everything and then in the advanced options what happens in the schedule you will now show later so so choose whichever supplies should not be considered and then whichever demand should not be considered uh, during the uh, during every run actually so if you choose those things what happens it will be coming so the parameters of a min max plays a very vital role in uh, doing your decision i am not giving a restock so no one be fine with that so uh, let us not restock it fine with that so let us now give a report on the only report now this time it will now give a report no? fine because i have not given what Uh, include moment uh, request supply fine we have a supply available there fine that will be considered as a no no fine keep on going now this time this talking you will know just for information because only i will not give a report no. it will be giving a report so you know So click on republish now. <clears throat> Export the PDF. Now you can see the output will be coming. Since it go down, and you can now see the forty by forty was coming actually. So this is not considered as a supply at all. The for the forty by one days which we have now created a moment request one. Sometimes what happens is they will now run the previous moment request and then I say purchase requisitions, purchase orders. Everything can be made as no. So you will not all allowed to see. the pure uh, what happens a replenishment only from the current point of your so there are multiple more what happens the changes which you have to make now fine on your parameters on the print min max and now it's only a report so it no not a create any extra uh, what happens a moment request structure and only one moment request so this completes the min max at the submit level now i am now going to replenish the org level i am going to replenish the org level If you go there, you this sub inventory. If I go there, item may be available in multiple sub inventories. Right? Not only main, it may be available. So it will now consider the stock from anywhere, and then the the what happens? Your picking rule will be considering it, and then it will bring it. Mainly, what happens? It will be only available on one main only, no other sub inventory. But if main itself is not having a stock, what do you have to do? We have to buy from a supplier actually. You have to buy from a supplier. Actually. So we are going to run it at the org level actually. You are going to run it at the org level. so once when you are going to run it at the org level then the supplier comes into picture actually the supplier comes into picture we are going to run it at the org level org level means what all the sub inventory stocks will be put together right okay? we have what 1000 over here and then we have 9 over here right okay? and then we have some moment request everything existing so the total org quantity is how much 1009 actually put together so the entire org has to be replenished from supplier actually so in org level when you are running it right okay? you have to replenish you go there and see is not right in this place if you go to the manager items and see the total quantity this may be appearing in what in mains of unit 955 and then ssfsi 54 whatever it is now fine you go on the make search i think uh, i made a moved it back now i made a moved it back and so uh, the 54 45 will come over here fine check on search now fine that one so we have only 9 over here and then uh, what about the 1000 here so the org level i'm going to replenish so before we start the org level replenishment Uh, we have to go on and see the item attribute controls because people would have modified many things. Fine, go that you want it. So we will now more uh, now go to item attribute controls and have a look at it. Thanks for that. You have to confirm it and then do it. Now fine, that will be uh, moving it to the uh, SFSI actually. I am not confirming it, so that the live access. <clears throat> you can select everything and then put the quantities over here and then click on confirm close. That will be confirming it actually. So click on the now fine. <clears throat> And you go there. Click on it. I will now go to what? Go to setup and maintenance. <clears throat> I will now see the item attribute controls. Majority of the attributes of the inventory must be org control. Now, click on search now. I will now say percentage item percentage attribute and control. The item attribute control. Item attribute control. So manage operational attribute group. It's fine. This is a task name. Thank you for it now. So go there. I will now query for the inventory. Actually, what is the query mode? Click on the query by example, and then query for the inventory. Inventory entry. So see that 
majority are all control fine there are only five attributes which has to be master control what is what inventory item stockable transactable and then negative measurement error and then positive measurement error so these are the only five which oracle recommends fine if you want to override it discuss the end client and then accordingly override it it's a very important one people make a mistake on this one fine do not do arbitrarily the every other thing on the inventory must be org controlled and go on then we now see this is the master control fine this is basically what about the default lot status it's okay uh, some of them uh, what about oracle made a recommended it also thank you guys so here we have it what the inventory item inventory item must be master control thank you guys so that is okay and the next is what lot expiry control is also master control okay fine go ahead leave it now fine the lot merge enabled lot split enabled it's okay <clears throat> go there and then lot translation you will these things are lot split lot merge and lot translations are yet to come will becoming very soon actually because now the process manufacturing has come now so it is not in full split yet we find once when it comes they will all be enabled actually and it is now maybe in 22e or 22b it will all be functional actually the negative measurement error and boss error must must on the lot maturity date is also uh, what happens is okay fine the lot translation enabled to that point is all okay and then ensure that the remaining are all serial status enabled Fine. Serial status enabled is the master level. Uh, shelf life days is the master level. Okay. So people would have modified all these things. Fine. You accept all the defaults, whatever is there on this place. Ah, so long, sir. Ah, I am fourth week class. Mudi the. Apna. Mudi the. Mudi the. Fourth week. Mudi the. Apna. Ah, okay. 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 Shelf life days fine. Go there. Leave it fine. Go there. We have got transaction, uh, trans transaction level. So inventory items stockable and transactable are all stocked. Is also not all level. Stocked is basically master level. Somebody has modified it and make it change to master level. Try so, inventory stock transaction level must be master control. So ensure that uh, inventory item stockable, transactable, negative measurement error, positive measurement error, and then certain certain things like what happens. These things are master level. The rest must be org level. So click on save and close. First of all, the attributes have been changed. So giving confirmation bank of the call, and then uh, yeah, scheduled process will be running for changing it now. Fine, it will be running. The process will be submitted first. So click on save and close again. Whenever you have a save and close, you have to save and close. Now otherwise, it will not be working properly. It is not running. And then we will have to log out and log in. Fine for all these things. What happens? You have to log out and log in. So click on it. So whenever many changes are made, what happens? You have to log out. now what i am going to do is i will now configure uh, the entire thing at the this five parameters of what your 10 and 50 your 5 and then uh, 5 and 40 these five parameters i am going to configure the uh, i am going to configure the item level actually so once when i configure the item level that will be firing actually that will be firing and then that will be doing it actually. so we will have to configure it right? at the item level i will put where is going to configure it. so when you configure the item level what happens it will be firing actually Go there. So let me again log in now. I am going to do the setup at the item level. Item is for the org level replenishment. So we'll be replenishing at the org level now. So let us now replenish at the org level. <coughs> so let us go to the product management and then product information management and then accordingly do it. <coughs> ट्रिब्यूट So click on it. Well, no go then query your item. You go to the browse items and then I'm going to query my item. Browse items and then let me query my item. Now we are going to go for the next level of replenishment, which is supplier level replenishment. So supplier level replenishment we are going to go for. There. So let me query my item. T zero one eight zero one. Query for it. So click on search. 
So T018 is an item, which is a min-max controlled item. So I'm now going to set up these five parameters at the org level actually. What is this? Nothing is coming here. T018, na? Hey, come on. Advanced search. T01. And then I click on search. Nothing is coming here. How come? In the browse items. What are the mistake I'm making it actually? And nothing is coming here. So we already created the item. Now. Let me duplicate it now. Or let me log on and log in because some concurrence are running it actually. And I don't know whether the concurrence has got complete or not. And something is happening on this one. Fine. We made a change at the control levels actually. And then let me log out and log in now. Sign out and sign in again. Because I, yeah, this thing is running now. Click on control. And click on I go to the product management and then I go to the product information management. Click on it. And now go to the browse items and wait for it. Go to the browse items. So it's a T018 is the one. And the min max item and click on search. So, okay, some problem because of the remote coming. So, let me go to the master org here. Now, find T010 is a master org. And so, let me click on it and then I'm going to set up the min max parameters at this page. And if you go on and see, we have a total stock of 1009. Here we have a thousand and then we have a thousand nine. So the entire uh, org is going to be replenished. And so what I do is I will not go to the specifications and then I will not set up the, uh, the, the replenishment for the org level actually. So when you want to perform an org level replenishment, we have to set up these five parameters at the item level actually. We're going to set up these five parameters at the item level. So go there. I will not go to the specifications on this one. I'll click on the specifications. And then let us now set up the inventory parameters at this level. <clears throat> Go to the specifications and I will be inventory now. <clears throat> so go there. I will not click on the inventory here and I'm going to set up. Right so I'm going to make some seven setups over here now. And I go to the inventory now and click on the inventory area. Uh, and not in the inventory actually. Uh, I will now go to what uh, in the planning area. Sorry, not in the inventory. I will now go to the planning area. So go to the planning area. There you have to set up. So first to set up is what? Inventory planning method, I will now make it as what? Min max. This is the first one. Fine. This is a wrong setup actually. I will now go there. I will now say minimum quantity. So 1200 is minimum. So if the entire stock of the org is less than 1200, what happens? It has to replenish. Fine. I'm not saying 1000 plus 9. Then go there. This is again wrong actually. And then the maximum, let us say 4000. I'm going to keep it now. This is again wrong. And then the order minimum, this is the, uh, what happens? The supplier's capacity, supplier's uh, vehicle capacity actually. So that's what I will now say order quantity minimum is to say 50, and then the maximum I can order in one on draw is 2000 now. Fine. So 2000 is the one. I know that This is also wrong. I know that. So state, I'm going to print the one. So state may be correct, actually. And so state will be correct. I will now make it as a supply. So we cannot replenish from another sub inventory. When a stock in one of the sub inventory is less than the total one, then I cannot bring it from another sub inventory. Fine. Let us say I'm now going to remove 100 rupees from my uh, trouser packet and then keep it in the shirt packet, my total value will be same actually. So when you have a stock in any other sub inventory is less, you have to bring it from external one only. Right? You have to choose what either as an inventory or, or otherwise supplier. I'm choosing supplier. This may be correct, but the remaining are all wrong. Actually. And then I will not go, I will not say fixed lot multiplier size. I will not say 10. Whatever I entered, no, fine. 
the inventory planning method minimum maximum minimum order quantity maximum order quantity and the fixed order player, everything is wrong right i know said everything wrong so we will not run it and then see this one so all these things are wrong actually i know that so i will not save it so click on save and close i will not run the min max at the wrong level so i have set up everything wrongly here <clears throat> and then go there i will not right click on the duplicate and then let me run the min max so again right click on the duplicate and now my screens over here i will not run the min max so go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process this time i am going to run the print min max so click on schedule new process i'll be printing the min max So print min max planning report is the one thing I'm okay. I'm not going to print it. So org level is what t zero one one. I know that. And then sort by inventory items. This time what happens? The planning level is not sub inventory. It will be org level plan. So there are two types of planning methods are there. Fine. I'm not choosing it at org level. When you are choosing org level, it will look at the attributes on the item for all the five parameters. These five parameters are what ten fifty. 540 and then 5 this will be taken from the org parameter that i will not make it the, the item attribute so i am not making the restock is going to know only fine i am not going to give output actually right? this is a supplier actually so we will not run it and then see whether it gives any output or not so click on it so it will not give any output at all and that's one and click on submit so click on okay it will not give any output at all to go there and see it's not fine it will not give any output at all <clears throat> because whatever i have said everything is wrong actually so it is not running so one print is completed we will now look at the output now fine we will now republish the output select it set the line and then we are going to republish and we are going to export the pdf So open it up and then see this. No data form. And anybody tell me what is wrong with it? I made a setup here now. Fine. I made seven setups or six setups on the item attribute actually. In this case, I made a setup on it. Everything is wrong. Can anybody tell me what is the, what is wrong with this? What is wrong with this? I made a setup here. Can you make a guess now? <clears throat> so we have a one OCA MCA. One month. Fine. We have one OCA MC in the inventory fusion with domination. We have one OCA MC. One double click on it. So this is one. So if it is an org controlled attribute, the moment you assign it from the master to org, it gets delinked. Fine. It is not getting delinked. And OCA gets delinked upon assignment, and then they will now exhibit different values in different org. For example, I have now demonstrated the shelf life actually. Shelf life is three days. The moment I assign it to one of the child dogs, it will be three days. And then when you make a change to six days, the three days will not have any effect at all. Similarly, if you make it as a ten days, this will not will not change at all. There it gets delinked actually. So similarly, these attributes are now assigned to org. And so when you make a change at the master level, the system is not sending the change at all. So we have to make it a dog level. So majority of the attributes on the inventory are basically master or control. Only five attributes are basically master controlled in inventory. What is what? Inventory item, stockable, transactable, negative measurement error, and then positive measurement error. Apart from that, every other attribute is normally or controlled. Fine. That is Oracle's recommendation. Fine. So that you can even override this recommendation Fine. if you feel like you can override it. So what we made is a wrong one now. So we will not go and then correct it. Actually. Click on it. Not correct. So instead of what happens, we open the master org and then we delete now. So we have to go to the child org and then do it. When you want to make an attribute change for the inventory, you have to go to the child org. And the, the bottom one is the child org. So here you have to make it. Let us now make a change on this. So click on it. We'll now go on and make a change on this. Go to the specifications. Right. Go to the planning now. Go to the planning. Now I am in this child org. Remember T zero one one. The child org. I am not making a change. Actually. I will now go to the planning. Now. Go to the planning. And then let me make a change. Fine. Now I am now making it as what? This is going to work. This is the correct one. Making the change the master level is not correct. There I have given thousand two hundred. Now I will now give you thousand five hundred. So here I have given a maximum of four thousand. Now let us give a maximum of five thousand. So here the minimum order quantity I will now say two hundred. So the maximum let us say I will now make it as what four thousand five hundred. 
going to call it and then go that and then the fixed lock multiplier size is what i will not say 200 so everything is different actually when compared to the master so all these things are different 5500 5000 200 4500 and then the fixed lock multiplier is 200 and go that call it so it is a min max plan actually this are all correct actually one two three four five plus this one is a sixth one and then here the replenishment type is now controlled at master level and so that is correct actually. This is the only thing which you have made as a correct one. Otherwise, what happens, everything is basically wrong. So we are going to replenish it from a supplier. So now these entries are correct. Go there, drop it down and then save and close. Now we will now run the min max again. We will now go to the mount process and then we will now resubmit this contract. This initially was not having any output. Now if you resubmit it, it will now give you an output. Now back here on this it is now going to, so the same parameter and resubmit it. So once when you submit it, it will be giving you an output. You can now see the output is going to come. So this time, what happens? Is we are now going to what? Do a replenish from org level actually. There are uh, the org parameters at the supplier level. Actually. So click on it, go there, and then republish the output. Export the PDF from this time, it will be good to see the software. Not sure. Open it up and then see this one. You know, see this 1200 is not coming, but 1500 is coming, 4000 is not coming, 5000 is coming. The total stock is not showing supply is zero, demand is zero. So, available quantity is minimum. And the minimum you initially begin to give a minimum of 100, the uh, master or child org is 100. There it was 4000, it is now 4500. And so it is now suggested to have only one. What happens? You have this thing now, fine. 4,500 as the output now, fine. As a single line, actually. Fine. Had you made it properly, it will now even suggest two lines also. Fine. It will now suggest two lines also. Yeah. So this is what is. So uh, uh, let us now change these parameters now, fine. I will now make it as about 100. And then this is 4,000 now. Fine. So or rather, I will now say maximum order quantity is going to say 3,000. I will not change this to 3000. You know, see the two lines of this thing will be coming. Now make a change to what? 3000. In this phase, I will make a change to 3000. So one, uh, one carrier can, can contain only one, one, uh, one, one lorry or one container can have only 3000. So it will be recommending two things now. I will not see this. It is not going to recommend two things now. I will not go to the browse items and then I will not query the item again. I will not change it to 3000. So that you'll be having two lines of uh, what happens a carrier to be supplied with the supplier actually. Because these informations are given by, this was now given by the supplier actually. Supplier is saying, my maximum carrying capacity is only 3000 sir. Fine. One, one vehicle can contain only. So it will be recommending two vehicles. So two vehicles will be recommending. It. I will not, this also will not make a change to 100. So it will not change it actually. So if I run it, it will now give two outputs. Now, this time I'm going to run it with what restock is gears. So, once when you run it as a restock is gears, so what you need to do is you have to set up certain things. So, first of all, you go to the tools and then go to the security console and then add one role. Fine, we had to add one role for this one. Fine, we need to have the supply orchestration coming into picture. Fine, go to the users and then we had to add one role for this because it's not coming from supplier. I will open up. Add this role always. Fine, you have to add this role now. I have already added. So what you have to do, you have to edit and then add. Fine, go to edit and then add it now. Fine. The role which you have to add is what? Supply chain operations manager. Fine. Supply chain operations manager is the one which is responsible for what happens uh, interfacing it to purchasing. This is not available in EBS at all. EBS, we don't have this now. So this is a new concept which has come now. Fine. It is called SCO. Supply chain orchestration is now than SCO now. Fine. And there is a document which explains this. If you go to this place, if you go to additional docs records one now, right? On your one, you open the additional document record, doc, docs records one, fine, go there, and then query for the do. Do means distributed order orchestration. There are two files which are repeating actually. Fine. Open up that third is the one file. Fine. On that, uh, what happens? Additional docs records one. If you go on and see query for the do, you will now find one document called third is the one do score. Fine, double click on. Open it up. So now if we go on and see this now, fine. So this is called distributed order orchestration actually. Fine. Distributed order orchestration, supply chain orchestration, do and score actually. So do is basically triggered by the order management actually. 
so once when you submit the order the do begins and then it ends with when the line status is closed we are now going to what happens a pick the product we are going to what happens a pick release and then do the pick confirmation then ship confirmation pick release pick confirmation and ship confirmation if all the three activities are confirmed completed it will be getting interface to order entry and then once when you close the line fine when you close the line line status is closed the do is complete right the do gets completed upon line closure every line closure of a sales order the do gets completed so sometimes what happens the do will be triggering a score also the score is a subset of a do if it is from order management actually there are three business processes in do which will be triggering this sub process of score good fine so the sub process are what back to back buy back to back make and then back to back transfer so for the back to back make buy and transfer it will be triggering a score and then the score begins with the process supply chain orchestration concurrent the purpose of score is to ensure that the material is available on the destination supply chain for shipping it to the customers and so once when the destination is now what happens got it now fine automatically it will do it so apart from the score being a subset of a do score also acts independently score also acts independently so now i am now going to push it into purchasing so score comes into picture now. so the demand from your inventory replenishment will be pushed into score area and then the score will be interfacing into purchasing actually the score will be interfacing in time so it's a excellent adopter it is a adopter so uh, one in and then uh, many outs actually fine one in and then many outs so the demand will be coming from one of the sources actually fine either it will come from your order management so as a do or otherwise from a inventory it will now come as what you are uh, uh, what's called replenishment or otherwise it will now come from manufacturing also so sco is an excellent adopter it has been configured only in fusion it is not there in dbs so now once when i push it it will now go into this area of the sco area and then the system will be running this process supply chain orchestration automatically or manually fine so in our case i think it is not automatic because it is not triggered by do if it is a triggered by do the process supply chain orchestration will be running automatically otherwise when the inventory replenishment is taking place we have to only run manually now fine sometimes it is manual sometimes it is automatic we'll not see whether it runs or not fine we will not have a look at it so otherwise we have to run this process supply chain orchestration manually fine now on every what happens a revision they are making it to make it automatic actually we'll not see if it is not running automatically i will not run it automatically so it begins at this point and then once when the destination is filled then the score gets completed we'll now go and have a look at it fine so once the destination is submitted is having sufficient material the score gets completed right so we are going to see the score part of it the do we will be seeing it a bit later now fine uh, when you are going into the order management we will now begin with the score actually <clears throat> Go there, on it. So this is a do score. Now what I am going to do is I will now run the min max with the replenishment as yes. So I will now run this min max planning. So I will now go there. Uh, this is already there. Click on that. You have to add this supply chain orchestration manager. And then whenever you add it, what happens? Have a habit of what after saving it. you run the this concurrent so that okay then upload stop it you go to the scheduled process and then run the uh, this concurrent click on schedule new process will be running this concurrent fine it's called import fine percentage user percentage role percentage whenever you make any changes on the uh, security console you run this concurrent once fine so that one okay now fine you run it So it will now sync all your setups on the security console with the transaction system side. You run it once. Fine. Uh, you can even schedule it also to run every six hours or twelve hours. Fine, like this. So that any changes you are making it there will be getting reflected. Now, since I am now going to interface it to purchasing. <sighs> hey, now our caller can power. Patmini can log out. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. Patmini can log out. now uh, whenever you are doing this now fine like come on so there are three th there are some setups on the procurement which are doing now fine come on let us see the procurement setups now fine we are going to interface it to purchasing now fine those are the ones and then here we will now do this <coughs> yeah you go let us come on now go to the financial the first setup you have to examine is what and go that so you will now say assign busy busy Set up here because you know we are going to go into the pro procurement now. Fine, assign business in a business function is the one. Fine, on it, and then we are enabling the procurement actually. 
So the business unit must be enabled for procurement. Fine, we are there. The requisitioning, the receiving, and then the procurement must be enabled. They are all modular in nature. At any point up, you can even add, keep on adding it. Fine. This is the first thing which you are doing. So now I'm now going to interface it from inventory. I'm going to interface it to procurement. So the requisitioning, uh, the receiving, and then the procurement must be enabled for this. So give me a answer. That is already done. Fine. That one I have to say. And then afterwards, what happens is you go there. <coughs> And then I will not click on this one. I click on it. I will not go to the search. No, thanks. <coughs> Configure requisitioning this one. <coughs> Configure requisitioning business function. This must be set properly for your BU. We have already set it up fine, while you're creating the structure itself. Fine, I will not choose the BU. And then we have this as an item validation or fine go that. It should not be a child org at all. It must be a master org. I mean, I'm wrong. I will not make it as a master org. It must be a master org. It is wrongly set, actually. So it must be a master org because the item validation org I made it wrongly, actually. Correctly. And then the ship to location is also required. This is the default one, which will be appearing on all your acquisitions, actually. Fine, the default one. Fine. This must be a master org. Remember, do not put any child org. Fine. I made a mistake here. I click on save and close. The master. And then this is an extra. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the configure procurement business function. Configure. Procurement business function. I'm going to place configure procurement business function. I will not choose my BU now. In the configure procurement business, this is again a master or no fine, and then fill up all the other parameters as we have explained. And then give it. So this is also set actually. The payment terms is immediate. And watch my initial records about how to set up this thing. This also. Then afterwards, what happens? You go there, go to the configure, uh, now say uh, manage point, uh, uh, document uh, numbering, uh, document, uh, something on numbering. Uh, uh, numbering. In one space, and then go to the inventory procurement worksheet and close all the windows on my gate. Don't save. Click on it. Go to the fusion inventory procurement worksheet. So it is on the document numbering actually. Uh, supply number, supply numbering. Uh, what are the task for configuration? Procurement document number. I'm going to take up the manage procurement document number eight. and then click on it. So there are three documents which needs a numbering actually, and that has to be set up. And I'll now go the determinant value is T01, and then I make a search for it. I'll set it up. So the requisitions will be starting on thousand, the purchase orders will be starting on two thousand, and then the agreements will be starting on three thousand. So that you have to initially designed. So once when it pushes into purchasing, it will be creating a requisition number of thousand and all, and then afterwards it gets converted into purchase order. So the basic ones which are required, and then afterwards, what happens? We have to go to manage requisition approvals. Fine, manage percentage, direct percentage approval percentage. Fine. We have to configure the approvals. For the manage requisition approvals, so we are going to begin with the automatic. Actually, we'll now have a look at it a bit later. Now. Fine. As of now, we'll now begin with the automatic. So there is one parallel which is enabled now. Fine, with that point, and then you have to enable one of them now. Fine. One of them we have to enable, it. and then click on the edit rules, and then we'll know what happens. Go to the edit rules. In the edit rules, what happens? So many things are enabled. Right? We will not do this actually. Right? We will now come back and we will now have a my coffee and uh, Tiffin has come now. Right? We will now have a break now, five minutes break. And then afterwards, we will now continue in setting up the manager position of the role. So any questions you can ask me. Right? No, no coffee break. So this has got a lot of rules. I will not do one thing. I will not see where there is no rule at all. I will not take up this header pre approved stage. This one, I will not take it up. And then click on edit rules and then see. <clears throat> Here also something is there. I will now take up the next one now and then click on edit code. <clears throat> Here also plenty of rules there have been. <clears throat> I will not choose this one now. Fine. Pre approved, pre approved header ones and just click on edit rules. <clears throat> oh God, everywhere people have not appeared. So many rules. I will not go to this one now. Click on edit rules. <clears throat> mm, let me disable this number. You've got only one number. Let me deliver it. So let me create a rule that the disabled actually. I will not make it as automatic. I will not make it as automatic. 
I don't know, give it highest priority. My description is automatic. Rule always supplies. I'm using it. Okay. Choose use rule always applies. Click on okay now. And then go there. Click on add actions on this one. Okay. Click on add actions. And then I will now say it is automatic. So to begin with, you can configure one such thing. And then remember, your rule only must be enabled, the remaining must be disabled actually. And people will keep on coming and then changing it. So whenever it is not getting approved, what happens? You have to come, come back and then make it. And that's okay. So I have now made it automatic now, fine, automatic approval. We'll now have a look at the approvals. There are multiple levels of approval. There are six methods of approval. We are going to see everything during procurement actually. So to begin with, what happens? We are now making it as automatic. And click on save now. And then click on deploy. We have to deploy it. Only then it will be able to. So it is a post approval header hierarchy. I've chosen it. I click on deploy. It is now getting deployed. <coughs> post approval header hierarchy is the one which I have now chosen. It. It now saying updating the rules across all participants. <coughs> I have now given a yes for this one. It will be getting deployed. And then we will now enable it. Thank you. So this one I will now enable it now. I click on enable. And then I will now disable the other one. Similarly, what happens? You can also try to use the same thing fine because it is across all the BUs and all LEs actually. So that you must be cautious. So anybody who is working on this instance also would have said something. So ensure before what happens, it is automatic actually. Fine. One of the rules is automatic and then go there. So it is not done. So we are now made this header. Fine. Nothing is there from the month of things there. Fine. So click on done now. Fine. Right. Now, similarly, on the purchase orders also, I'm going to make it as automatic. It will not make it as automatic. Fine. It is not done. So it has to be enabled actually. Finally, after having configured it, it will be enabled. So manage percentage. It is called document approvals. So manage document approvals is the one. So manage purchasing document approvals is the one. Go there. Here. One serial is enabled, fine, click on it. I will not go on and edit the rules and then have a look at it. Now. Edit rules. And then let me have a look at it now. Oh God, so many are there. I'll cancel them because they're not use something else. Fine, I'm going to use the same thing. Fund, funds override approval. Uh, there's no reason. Basically, the funds don't do it now. Fine. I will not use this one. Post approval. Not the funds one. Fund, do not choose the funds one now. And then click on edit rules. Nothing is there. Fine, click on plus now. Fine. Let me create a one. Fine. Automatic. Rule always applies the one and click on OK. Click on add conditions. <coughs> Here, I will not make it as automatic. And then click on OK. And that's it. Fine, give a save. Fine, I'm choosing the post approval first responder means. And click on deploy. We'll be having a look at what does it mean later on now. So I know made one automatic in this area. And then I will now enable the stage participant combination actually. The stage participant combination is going to be enabled so that it will be used as an automatic now. So wherever you're writing on automatic, find so that you want to do the one where I written it and enable this now and then disable the other one. And remember, people will be dynamically making a change and then you have to come back before you submit for approval. Actually. And so that you know, I will not disable it. And that's it. So the basic requirement of setups and procurement is now complete. It's all done now. Check on that. Now, let me run the replenishment with what happens, the restock is with us. Let me run the replenishment with the restock with us, and then go there. So the score, uh, sometimes what happens, the process supply chain orchestration will be automatically running and then interfacing it to score. Actually. Sometimes we have to run it manually. We'll see if it is not running, we'll not run it manually. I'll go there. And then here, if you go to home icon, go to the home icon, and then open up your supply chain execution, you will not find one. Supply orchestration is coming. This icon is uh, coming up because of your role. Fine, your uh, what happens? Supply chain operations manager. Fine. Supply chain operations manager. I have added. So that role is responsible for bringing this co actually. Fine, this co. This co is now coming up because of this. Fine, co is now coming up because of this. Supply chain orchestration or supply orchestration is coming because of the role. S manage what happens? You added what supply chain operations manager that is responsible for this role. Fine. So we had added. And then run that, what's called your uh, import user and role. And then what happens? You will now find you log out and log in and then see this icon will be coming out of the supply chain this execution actually. And this will be coming. This will all come. Now I'll now go there. Let me run it. What is the schedule do process? We have set up the attributes brought from 4,500 to 3,000 on the item attributes fine, on the child off. Click on submit now. We will now run again the print min max. Print min. 
your tab. Print mill is the one I'm now running it now. So click on OK. So organization is a T011. I can go there, click on it. Sort by inventory item. And then here it is the org level replenishment. I go there. And then here we can leave other things blank and go there. I will now make the restocking clear. This will now give an output. And then since it is an org level, it will now pick up the information from the item attributes and then do it now. Item says that what it has, it has to be replenished from a supplier actually. It is not an inventory org, it is a supplier. So it will be interfacing it to SCO area now. Fine, SCO area. And then the SCO area will be interfacing it to procurement actually. Had it been an org, it will be interfacing it to another inventory org. And SCO is basically an adopter. So the incoming demand will match with the appropriate supply actually. The incoming demand will be appropriately matched with the supply. So what happens there? Not do that. So we, want us. so we are now given this verse. Now, since I have given 3000, it will be giving you two lines of output also. And restock the list of click on something. We are submitting this process now. Find another one time. Now submitted. The min max at the org level is now running now. So we are now given supplier as a what is called source in the master org. Find there is a master control attribute. The remaining attributes are child or control. So we are now set up everything on this now. Find you can now see. The two levels of output will be coming on this. Two lines of output will be coming. So click on this now. Find print min max planning report and go there. I will now republish it. So click on republish. Go there. Export to PDF now. So we are exporting it to PDF. Go there. And then go on and show it now. Open it up. Now you can see. That what happens, it has not given only one line again. Now, fine. Maybe the parameters are not sufficient. Actually, fine. I should have given 2000, then it will come as a 4000 as a two lines. Actually, fine. So, 3000 and 4000, I think uh, the maximum it will be given two lines only. Fine. It is not showing me as a two line. I don't know why it's so. It has to show me as two lines. Uh, maybe here it may be showing as one, but in reality, what happens, it may be going as a two lines. Actually, we will now see whether it is now gone as a two lines or not in the score area. Right. The score area has to be fired. Square is fine. Now, let us now go on and look at the, what's called your monitor process. Now, the score, the process supply chain has not run at all. So, we have to run the process supply chain manually. So, go there. So, we have to run the process supply chain manually. So, due to the coming from order management, it will be running automatically. Fine. When it is coming from order management, but when it is coming from inventory, it is not running automatically. So, we have to run this process supply chain orchestration manually. And then here, one more thing is what we have to take up this process ID is what this one now. Fine, this is the one. So we will now take up this number four four three one nine eight zero. Fine. Let me take a copy of it now. We have to have this ID in the process supply chain orchestration as a parameter we have to pass it on. So I will now take up the print min max reports of process ID over here now. Fine. I'm taking a copy of it now. I will now go to the schedule new process. Let me run what process supply chain supply and then give it an so process supply chain orchestration is the one which is now going to what happens uh, uh, interface it to what happens the uh, purchasing action and we're going to run it now. so the incoming demand from in max will be interfaced to purchasing now score is basically an order so whatever demand is coming inside it will be getting matched to the appropriate output action fine it will be getting appropriate match so in this case the incoming demand is saying that you replenish from supplier and so the score adopter will be creating a requisition of the purchasing area Okay. The score will be creating a purchase requisition of the purchasing area. So from where the incoming is coming. So which one you have to choose now? Find the planning central or a self service procurement or whatever it is, order management you have to choose it now. In this case, ours is what inventory. So the inventory in the incoming now. And then I can put org level organization, find the number for the organization, or otherwise, if you have the batch number over here, it's basically min max, and then I will not paste it. So the batch number is what min max and then the the uh, what's called the ID of the what's called concurrent actually. So this is the batch number. I will not take a copy of it and then go there, click on it. So we can even pass on the org level without the batch number also. And then you can even say all these things we can fill up. So this is the bare minimum which you have to give it up and then click on submit. So for this particular batch, it is now going to run and then it will now bring in the print min max demand, which has now come into the interface tables of scope. It will be matched and then it will be given the output of the process requisition of my concept. So the score has got an interface area. The interface area is filled up with a print min max input now. And then when you run the process supply, it will be basically mapping it to your appropriate output. So there are three outputs are possible in the score now. 
the scope what happens it will be giving an output to either purchasing or otherwise buy make and transfer of the three outputs in this case it is a buy actually in this case it is because the input says that you buy it from a supplier so it will not pick up the parameters from the buy in other way you go to the process supply chain orchestration interface from that point so in the interface tables of score it will now come into the base tables of score now fine click on that what's called the log output of it now i will not go and have a look at it so give the log fine open the log you can open the log i will not take a copy of it and then put it in a word file and then see it now go there so let me open a word file and then see it now so file and then i will now make a blank document and then put it up on the paste it away so if you go up on the screen and let's not you can now see that uh, what happens uh, this the list of interface batches processed it says what in the min max fine we are given this as a what's called the batch number so it has processed it if you leave it blank also it will not pick it up because it is already available on the interface table section. so it has no process detection so let's now go to the sco area and then query for this now fine go there so we already have it now fine we can even query on the batch number actually. we will now go to the sco area and then query for it so other it will not give you if there are multiples are there everything will be stored here sco i will again tell you what exactly sco is going to do <coughs> so incoming demand in the case it is a what's called a min max uh, uh, it needs a material from a supplier actually that is what's called as come with the batch number so that has now landed up on the interface area of sco so once when you run the process supply chain orchestration it's going to process it it will now look from where you want to replenish you want to replenish from a supplier so it will be mapping the incoming demand to your purchase requisition actually it will be mapping mapping it to the purchase requisition sco has got three outputs now fine either a buy or a make or a transfer in this case it will now look up at this place and then see from where you want to replenish and then this adopter is now going to map this incoming demand to a purchase requisition as a supply actually so it is basically for a demand supply balancing so it's not done outside so this is now already processed by the process supply chain orchestration has now come up over here fine this place fine close it now don't say now we will now go on the look at our area now <coughs> multiple now and now go to the home icon <coughs> home icon go to the supply chain execution go to the sco area supply chain orchestration area so here uh, we can go there click on it up we had a problem on the child or remember right? when you are making a inter supplementary transfer orders <coughs> it didn't pass at all <coughs> because we are given that inter supplementary transfer order parameters late actually so when you are doing it fine do it properly and then see to it that you are getting complete on the inter supplementary transfer orders also properly because i made a mistake it never recovered at all for me <coughs> one second <coughs> now what i'm going to do is i will now click on that task list actually on the right hand side and then i will now go to the what's called manage supply lines i will now go to the manage supply lines and then i will now query on the batch number actually so supply request reference number is the batch number i will now paste it over here and then bring it over i can even query on this or otherwise i can query on the item also whichever is convenient for you to make it thank you consult so once when you search for it it will now give you the sco order number now it says that the charge account cannot be generated there are three accounts which are required for what happens the procurement now fine so that has to be set actually uh, i will be coming to for the explanation a bit late now fine brother so the charge account the accrual account and the various accounts are set now fine it is not done what happens it will not be working at all properly so let me set up those accounts now fine will be having a look at it a little now fine brother so let me set up fine brother it is not there so we have to set up the charge account it says very clearly this place fine brother it says very clearly the charge account is not set at all the charge account is not set so sco adopter is unable to interface it to purchase purchasing the charge account is not set actually so there are two lines are there one there are two lines are there so one for 3000 and then one for 1000 but both the lines we are we have to set up three accounts actually in procurement we are going to do it we'll be explaining it a bit later now fine i will not set up simply fine brother come on it i will not set up the accounts we will get fine brother So go to the setup and maintenance. Let me set up the charge, accrual, and variance account. So click on it. I will not go there. I will not go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. I go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. I go to the manage mapping. Manage percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage of an entry. I go to the manage mapping set and I go to the cost accounting part. For the cost accounting part, so manage mapping set of cost accounting. I will now go to the material charge account and then set it up. 
that is required for procurement actually. And we have set up the inventory valuation account beginning. Fine. Similarly, for the purchasing, three accounts has to be set up. I will not say material charge account. I will not say that. Material account organization. This will be done by the financials, but since financials is not there, we are doing it on their behalf actually. I will not add my chart of accounts over here. Fine. Click on plus one. Let me add my chart of accounts. So my account is what? 001. Fine. Remember, we had a problem now and because of which I'm not using this COA actually. 001, T01 COA, I'm using it actually. I'm using this COA and not T01 actually. We had a problem. So I have now made 001, T01 COA. You can also use the same COA. If you are using it, you need not have to sit here at all. Anything. Fine. If you are using the same COA, I am setting it. And then if you are having a different COA for your, for your COA, I have to set it. When you are creating your primary ledger with your own COA, it's okay. But if you are using my COA on your primary ledger, no need to do anything because I have already set it now. So click on plus now, fine. For that. I am not going to set up the charge account. So I will not put the account over here. Fine. To the 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000. Fine. I will not set as a default. It is not set as a default actually. It is not set as a default. And then go there. And then click on save and close. No, fine. By which, what happened? The charge account for my COA is set actually. Fine. The default means what? It is default for all the organization. You write your account and then set as a default. It will be default for the all organizations. Fine. Click on save and close in the top. So by which you are not done. Similarly, what happens? I will not check the invoice price variance. I will be explaining it during purchasing. What exactly all these things mean. Fine. Invoice, invoice price variance as well. So this is one. So I go there. I will be setting up this account also. And remember, in reality, uh, the financial team will be setting it up. Fine. But since we don't have any financial team here now, fine. We are setting it up. Invoice price variance account is a must actually. Fine. So these two accounts are required for a purchase requisition actually. Fine. Invoice price variance account is required. So, that, so click on add now. Fine. I will not put my chart of accounts over here. Now, fine. I am now giving you from an implementation perspective. Remember, fine. How we are going to implement the product. So this training is not an end user training, it is an implementation training. And so I'm now teaching it from an implementation perspective. And then go down now. And then here I will now add it. So uh, IPV is basically an expense account. Fine click on plus. I have 1002 as an expense account. I will not put the expense account over here. Then I iPhone, another iPhone. 1002 is an expense account. <clears throat> right. IPV is an expense account. I will not set as a default. So only these two accounts are required for a purchase requisition actually. Fine. One thousand is an expense account. I am now saving and closing. Now it's all set actually. Thank you, Kandana. Let us now log out and log in. Fine. Whenever you make some major changes, what happens? You have to sign out and sign in. Sign out of it. And then click on confirm now. No, come on. So I now close all of the tab regions over here now. Now I will now sign in. So I go to the supply chain orchestration and then I go to the supply orchestration. Oh, yeah, now fine. There's a supply chain orchestration. It got stuck in the area. Now fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not go to the managed supply lines. I will go there. I will not query for this now. Go there. Click on it. Let I have now. Click on search. I have not set up this. Now what happens? I am now going to resubmit this two now. Fine. Charge account as well as the IPV is now fine. Select it and then resubmit. Fine. Click on resubmit. It will be resubmitted again. It will be again making a check of it. So click on it. I will again go there. Second line also I selected and I will now resubmit it actually. So I have now resubmitted both the concurrence. It will now make a check whether this error goes away or not. Now click on refresh. So the errors are gone. So when I resubmitted, the errors are gone. Now. So it needs the charge account as well as the variance account. Only when you set it, the error is gone. Right? Click on the score number now. Click on the score number. Now it will be getting interface to purchase. So go there. So it is not interface. Device. So first line one one is there. Thank you. One, 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 one. You know, see it's complete actually. Second also, if you expand it, what happens? You know, see. So one for the thousand and then one for three thousand actually. So you need the charge account and then the invoice material charge account and the invoice price variance account. We are going to see the complete accounting. Right? We'll be doing it during uh, uh, whatever the later part. I know that. So it is not done. Now. I know that more. So go there. Thousand and three thousand. If you go and then click on this thousand line, if I expand. In this place, what happens? You cannot say the purchase. Uh, it has to go there. Fine, that. So it gives the two, three types of recommendation. Buy, make, and transfer. Fine. Or score will now give a three types of recommendation. Fine. Depending upon the input. So input is saying I need the item from the supplier. So it will be interfacing into purchasing. So if you go to the buy, fine. Click on the buy. <coughs> the recommendation of the buy. 
cannot see there will be a what happens the 1001 as a purchase requisition is got created actually you don't create the purchase make and transfer will have nothing actually because incoming needs a material from purchase supply so what happens now done so click on so click on buy uh, so 1000 is a what happens the requisition is created for this and then you go and then keep your cursor on the so 2.1 now find 2.1 it will be having the same requisition number but this time it is 3000 actually Requisition number is three thousand. So one requisition has got two lines of thousand and three thousand actually. It is already created. If you click on the execution documents, it will not show you all the documents that are already created. One thousand and one one. If you click on the orchestration plan, and click on the orchestration plan, it will not say what happens. It needs. It is not saying progress as a purchase order. It is not a purchase order actually. Fine. Sometimes it is not being going properly. Now you keep your cursor on the different different lines. It will not show you the orchestration properly. Click on the second line. It is not a purchase order actually. The purchase requisition only afterwards purchase order has to be created. It will be also becoming problem. Now it has now interfaced into purchase requisition. The execution document of one thousand one. We have to convert this into a purchase order. Actually. So before we submit it, convert the purchase order, we have to have the supplier in place actually. We will now create a supplier. Actually. So right click on the duplicate. Let us now go on and create our supplier. Actually. We are now going to create a supplier. Actually. So let us now go on and create our supplier over here. It's all very huge actually. Fine, you have to work very hard. Then you go to the procurement. I go to the procurement. I have given two roles of the supplier. One is about supplier administrator, and then the supplier manager will be coming and then discussing about it a bit later. So once when you are given two roles of a supplier manager and supplier administrator, this icon is coming. I go to on it. So I will now go to the supplier. I click on supplier. So click on supplier now. Procurement supplier. I am not going to create a supplier. Click on it. Let us now create a supplier. Go there. So before we create a supplier, what happens? Uh, there are some profiles which are involved for supplier creation. Actually, we will not have any. There are some profiles, rather some some tasks which are there. Fine, go to the setup and maintenance, and then go there. <clears throat> I will not see the approvals. No, fine, go there. I will not make everything automatic. Fine, click on search. No, fine, the approvals are to be made automatic. Fine, go there. I will not say manage SUP percentage, APP percentage, supplier approvals. Very sure about the thing on finance. Yeah, manage supplier spend authorization approvals. Click on it. Well, now you the spend authorization supplier. Find that one. This is the task name. Manage supplier spend authorization supplier. Now one is enabled. Find. We'll not see whether it is automatic or not. And click on the edit rules. We have to make everything is automatic now. So this is one. This is automatic. And it's okay. It's lovely automatic. Otherwise, you change it to automatic. Fine. Spend authorization is automatic. And click on it. And then supply registration approvals uh, will also go, okay? go there. Go to the supply. I'm not going to create a supplier. And then this also will not make it as automatic. Okay? Go to the manage supply registration approvals will go there. <clears throat> so this is enabled now. Fine. Click on the edit rules. And then if you're in your system, right, whatever you're working, fine, is now saying approval required. Will now make a change to order automatic. So click on edit now. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? It'll be going here, 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 and there now. Fine. Make it as automatic. We'll be discussing about it during procurement. What exactly they mean? Make it as automatic. I click on save and then deploy. So registration approvals has to be made automatic. Spend authorization has to be made as automatic. I know it's too much of a stuff actually. <laughs> what to do? I... You have to only remember that. Right? So percentage supply percentage approval it will not give all this thing. So go there is not enough. Click on done. Come out of it. So. The spend authorization is made as automatic. It was already automatic. This I made it as automatic. My profile change will now come to look at. So this is for the negotiation for the sourcing. Now fine, this was the negotiation. So internal is also for something else. Now fine, the remaining are not required. So mainly your spend authorization must be automatic, and then supply registration approvals must be automatic. So we are now set up all those things now. Now we will now go on and create our supplier. So click on the home icon, and now what happens? You go there. You go to the procurement now. Fine, go to the procurement. And then here, I will now go to the supplier. And then let me create a supplier over here. We are now going to create a supplier. So click on this uh, task list and then go to create supplier. Fine. Create supplier. I'm now going to create a supplier. Let me create my first supplier over here. So here, supplier is what? T01 underscore sub underscore one. The first supplier is now getting created. Now. So business relationship will now come to the database later. Now. So go there, drop it on. I'll now make it as a spend authorization. What exactly is prospective? I'll now have a look at it. Fine. Make it as a spend authorization. Tax organization, make it as corporation now. Fine. Make it as corporation. Fine. Tax on the remaining or not mandatory. We'll be coming to these fields a bit later now. Fine. So these are only three mandatory fields which are required for getting a supplier. And click on create. Fine. We'll be coming to the remaining fields during procurement actually. And click on create. 
we are now in inventory and so we will now have a bare minimum supply creation on this node. So click on create. It will now come to this place now, fine. There's a generic area and go that one. And then here you leave everything other than fine. Go to the payments area, fine. Click on the payments now. And then make one of the payment as an automatic payment. Fine. I will now select the check and now make it as automatic. I will now put a tick mark here. Fine. That becomes a default payment method. And that's it. Fine. So the remaining, leave it as such now. We'll now have a discussion later on. Fine. Give us save. So the supplier profile is now saved in the payment terms of a check as automatic as a default payment. And then go to the address after the profiles is there. You have saved now. So click on address. And we'll now go on and get our address. Fine. Click on personal fine. You're going to get an address. You're going to get an address. <coughs> so address name, right? I will now go on address name. I will now say P01. Country is United States. Fine. United STA and then give a diagram. Fine. You write United STA and then it will now come fine. Choose it. Fine. Please use United. Do not use any other country because this training instance is not configured for any other country actually. It is not fully configured for US and then use this. And then you go to the postal code and then put this code over here. And then you attack. You'll be populating the remaining fields as such. Fine. Choose the biggest one. And click on OK. The remaining fields gets populated. And then this supplier, we can very well place a purchase order. And then we can very well make a payment also. And then please do not enable this. And if you enable it, what happens if we can only send the RFQs and quotes to the supplier? We cannot create a PO as well as we cannot make a payment. This is the same as EBS. In EBS also, if you enable all the purposes on now, you can only send the RFQ and quote, and then you cannot make these two things about. This is, a, this, is a, this is a bug actually. When I was attending this training in uh, uh, what I was in uh, Redwood Shows, California, in Oracle headquarters, the person who was designing this was uh, conducting the training. I asked him, Hey, yeah, there's a bug in EBS. Why you kept it? I was asked to exactly replicate whatever is there in EBS now. Fine. <laughs> and so I don't have any other go. So if you enable all the three, we cannot do the purchase orders as well as in payment in uh, whatever is EBS. So he has replicated that in Fusion also. That is what you are saying, sir. What to do? Well, my instruction given to the man by management, I made a replica of exactly whatever we have in EBS. So do not put it. If you do not put it, then we can very well send the RFQs as well as we cannot do the bidding also. Fine. We'll be coming to that part a bit later. So don't put it. So these two will enable the RFQ and bidding. But if you put this, these two are disabled actually. Fine. There is a bug in uh, EBS. And that, that bug has been retained over here. So the address is now created. Fine. Give us save and close. Now they have brought in a new concept. Fine. You cannot create a site actually. If you want to go on that, then afterwards we'll now go to the contacts. No? Fine. Go to the contact. After having done the profiling address, what happens? You go to the contacts and then we are now going to create a contact. Go to the contact. Thank you, contact. Now say who is going to sit on that particular address actually. The contact will be sitting on the address now. So we'll be getting in contact. So. <clears throat> so go there. I will now say put my name now. Fine. One and then Nana one. And go to point. I will now go there and put mail ID now. It is going to say me three. <laughs> fine. Uh, dot me three. Address. So put a distinct mail. Uh, this will be communicating on the mail also. Right? If you have only one mail or if you have multiple mails, it's okay. Right? So something dot something at the right, gmail .com, right? for you. So this will be used for your supplier portal actually. Right? Used for supplier portal. We'll be looking at the supply portal a bit later. Right? Uh, as of now, we are not going to use it now. What are the actions and then what to select now? So this contact is going to reside at which address we are going to see now. Right? So click on search now, find you know, find only one address available now. Right? So go there. So we can now see the address coming up now. The T01. I make a search now. Give a cancel. It's not coming. Ah. Ah. Our contact has to reside in an address actually. I'm going to select an ad. In the select an ad itself, it has to show me in the bottom actually. It's not showing me thing if I cancel. Ah. Why it's not coming? I might not have saved it actually. Fine, give us save at every stage. What happens? You have to give us save now. So, address has been created now. Fine. You're given a save now. And then you can go to the contacts. It has to show me now. Go to the contacts. The contacts has to reside in the network. Click plus now. <coughs> I don't know what action I'm going to select my app. You have to get that address. This is not coming. E01. Click on search. I don't know why it's not coming. You will not see this. Okay. I'm unable to create a contact over here. Till now, however, because there will be some changes. Somebody might have made it. Otherwise, I'm making a mistake. Now go to the site. 
So you know, after contacts only you are going to the site now and click on site. Now site is not enabled. So here only legal users can create a site. It is not so enables anybody can create a site. Here the legal user is not a user who is having a what's called association to LBU. We have created what EMP1, EMP2, and EMP3 are legal users. Fine. So that is the first requirement. The basic requirement is what only legal users can create a site. And then the second one is what we have to make him as a buyer actually. We have to make him as a buyer. So let us not make him as a buyer. So only buyers can create a site. Suppliers can be created to anybody. They are global in nature. That is, supplier sites can be created only with the legal users. I will not go there. I will not make him as a buyer. So click on setup and maintenance, and then I'm going to make him as a buyer actually. So click on it. Don't go there. So go to the search now. Fine. I will not go to what manage percentage. Procurement percentage, the agent percentage. Manage procurement agent, the one time that point. So manage procurement agent, I'm going to make him as a buyer. So there it is a managed buyer or whatever it is that you give us here it is a managed procurement agent. I click on plus now, fine. I'm not going to make him as a buyer. So the procurement we use what T01, and then I give it a app. The agent name is last name, comma, first name. Right? It is EMP1, comma, space, T01 underscore. Comma space T01 underscore. Likewise, you have to choose it. Right? Last name, comma, space, first name. Right? Last name, comma, space, first name. Right? Long come over here. That is the agent name. The default we use what? The one. The, the, if you have a printer attached, you can put the printer over there. Like that. So he can even manage other agents' document of requisition. He right? will always give a full access. Because within purchase offices, anybody can access anybody's document. And then here also, what happens? He give full access. Normally, all the purchase officers can see other agents' documents and then operate it. And that is how every company will work now. And you will not restrict it actually. Because you won't have my, my multiple purchase orders with that. So you are not putting everything as a full. So anybody can work on anybody else's document actually. So he is now made as a procurement agent. He is a buyer actually. So that's it. So click on save and close. Now he has now been made as a buyer. Now he can very well create a site actually. We go that to this place. We can very well create a site actually. Uh, where exactly is so, not this place? What happens? We can avoid it. So, what you have to do is you have to cancel and then re query. Then only you know. So, let us now query it. I have not given already a save now. Fine. The plus has to come now. Fine. Not coming. So, give us cancel and then re query it. So, click on S. So, click on done. <laughs> we will now re query the supplier. Click on and go there. I will not go to the manage suppliers. Instead of create suppliers, I'm not going to go to the manage suppliers and then we query it now. So it is now starting on T01. So click on search, it will be coming on the bottom now. So it is now saying one, uh, fine, click on it. Your profile change request is pending. Fine, that is the problem. Your profile change request is coming. So that also needs an approval. That is why it is not coming actually. Your profile change request it is now pending for, for the supplier actually. So uh, we will now disable this profile change approvals. That is why it is not coming actually. A profile change request is not pending. So here, if you go to the what's called yeah, the notification icon, there is no notification icon available now. So let us now bypass this profile change approvals also. I thought that that may not be required. That is also required. Then click on search. So I will now say supplier percentage, APP percentage. Let us know what happens. The profile change, I thought that these two are sufficient, but this is also required. So I will now go to the manage supplier profile change approvals now from the manage supplier. We will now see to whom it has to go. Manage supplier profile change approvals. Go there, click on it. Click on edit rules now. So here I have already made it as automatic actually. I already made it as automatic. I already made it as automatic. But why the profile change approvals is still pending? I don't know. Click on that now. So when you make such changes, what happens? What I have not done is what I have not logged out and logged in. That is the problem. So once when you do change, such major changes, you have to log out and log in. Otherwise, what happens? It will not be sensed at all. And click on confirm. So let me log out and log in. Right? So these are the mistakes which are making. Okay. Let me log in now. Let me create the second supplier actually. Right? The changes are not getting reflected because we are not logged out and logged in. I go to the procurement and then I go to the supplier now. Right? Because he himself is an administrator, and so what happens? It has to come on the bell icon actually. If you click on this one, you have to get a bell icon, a notification over here. It is not coming here. So that means what? There is some other issue. So after making changes, all the, all the approvals to automatic, what you, what you do is you go on that 
log out and log in. I find that very, very important actually. Okay. So, uh, there are all some of the things. Pending approval, what? This is the one. My supply is not coming here at all. In the main area, pending approval is not coming at all. So, let us now go there, click on it. We will now go to manage suppliers and then query my supplier actually. And go to the manage suppliers. P01. Click on search. So I don't know whether I have given a supplier administrator power or not. Fine. Go to the home icon. Let me see whether I have given a supplier administrator or not. I might have forgotten it actually. Fine. Go to the tools. And then I go to the security console. I will not see whether he is a supplier administrator also or not. I might have forgotten it actually. You go to the security console and then let me make him as what? You go to the users area. Here, what happens? I know put T01 into my. I have to give him as a supplier administrator. Click on edit and then click on add role. I will now try to add the supplier administrator. Supplier AD. Supplier administrator Ora. Oh, I have not given it. It's only a copy. See, that means what original is already added actually. Supplier administrator code is already added actually. Supplier administrator is already original is already added. Supplier administrator, supply manager, and supplier administrator are already given now. So it has to work. He has to get a notification for this now. I don't know why it's not working now. Ah, somewhere it is gone. So let us now go there and then create a new supplier. Because I have now logged out and logged in. And then let us now create a new supplier. Let us now create a new supplier. A new supplier. <clears throat> Here also, it is not showing me any pending request actually. Find manual request. So if you click on that request, we will not see whether I can approve it or not. A manual request for creating a supplier is not here actually. Uh, it is not showing you an approval hierarchy. Fin underscore IMP. It is not gone to fin underscore IMP. Anymore. So it is approval. It will be pending with fin IMP actually. Let me log in with fin IMP and then see whether he is having this power or not. So let us now reset the passwords of in IMPL. You go to the tools and then I will now go to the security console. Let me reset the passwords of in IMPL as well as Calvin Roth. Now find it. Query for it. Fin underscore IMPL is the one. Uh, underscore I am query for it. Fin IMPL is the one. Let me reset the password for the fin IMPL. Click on reset password. I will now make it a what? Welcome one to three. Welcome one to three. Give it a Welcome one to three. I'm not changing the password. Similarly, Calvin Roth also, I will now reset it up now. So it's not done now. Fin underscore AMP is now reset. I will now query for the Calvin Roth. Calvin Roth is basically a procurement uh, manager actually. Calvin Cox is basically a procurement manager actually. The systems one. I will now reset the password for the Calvin Roth. Calvin.roth is a username actually. Calvin.roth is a username. Click on reset the passwords. And go there. So the new password is what? Welcome123. Welcome123. And click on reset. Yeah, yeah. One second. Hello, Yarga. Hello, Yarga. So I have now reset the passwords of these two employees now. So what I do is I will now go there and then search for it whether they have got any approvals pending with them or not. Yarga. Uh, Yarga, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, see whether he has gotten notification for approval or not. Calvin Roth is basically a procurement decision. You click on that, what's called the bell icon, you would have got some notification for the approvals. Right? Purchase order is coming. Supplier approvals is not coming at all. Yet. 
the supplier for so and so requisition document, document requisitions are there. Supplier approvals. One supplier approval has come, but it is not our supplier actually. Supplier for Gupta radio. So come. Uh, it will be so one month ago. Not the, now only. It is not there. So Calvin Roth is not having, you will now have a look at the fin underscore IMPL. Now go there. Fin underscore IMPL. So let me log in and then see this now. I'm now doing a login from another what's called another browser actually. So click on this now, find what it not. Action required supplier Gupta radio is only coming. Radio could not be created. Because there is no compound where I can't. But ours is not come because we made a change, but it has not got stuck somewhere actually. Even though we made it automatic, I not logged out or logged in because of which what happens, it has not come. Back. So let us now go there and then we'll now create another supplier actually. So click on it. I know made it is automatic, but uh, since I have not logged in long, the supplier has got locked actually. So go to the procurement and then you go to the suppliers now. So let me get the second supplier and then see this whether it comes properly or not. Uh, here, even the pending is also not coming. Here, there is one thing now. Find the supplier with incomplete setup. Find the point. This is the complete supplier with the incomplete setup. What exactly is happening? Actions. Find the actions. And then go to edit now. Find supplier. And then I'm not writing edit now. Find the incomplete setup is now saying now. Click on it. Review changes. There are profile changes that that have not been submitted for approval actually. That's what is saying now. So click on the review changes. Let me submit it and then see. Fine, it has to be automatic actually. It has to be automatic. So the address is now added. Fine, submit. I will now submit it. So upon submitting, it will now go to the appropriate people for approval, but there is approval is automatic. Internal profile change request. Oh God. Internal profile change is also coming into picture actually. Fine. The internal profile change is coming. I know that. The internal profile. So that also has to be set properly. <laughs> So we have to set up the internal profile chain. Thank you. We'll now go there. Click on go to the setup and maintenance. We'll now go to the supplier approval and then change the internal profile chain. Thank you. I'll now go to the search now. It's called supplier percentage. APP percentage fine entry now. We got all the problems now. Internal supplier registration of this. So this, this, and then this, and then the internal supplier registration of this. So internal supplier registration of this. Internal supply registration of rules. We'll also make this automatic. I will now go to the edit rules. <clears throat> and go there. click on plus now and now make it automatic. It is automatic. Automatic. So go there. Click on description. I know. Rule always applies. Fine. Click on OK now. The internal profile change approach. Fine. Click on add action now. It's a very complex topic. You have to work, work hard and then remember it also. You know that. I'll now give a save and then click on deploy. I'm deploying it actually. It'll now try to correct the problem. Fine, stop creating a new software. It'll not correct the problem. It is not done. I will now enable this. This is now enabled actually. So internal supply registration approvals is now enabled actually. Internal supply registration approvals. Internal supply profile change approval. There is not a good profile change. You'll be coming to be also. So one, two, three, and then four has to be done as automatic. You know that. Fine. Supply spread authorization, supply registration, supply profile change approvals, and then internal supply registration. So fine. Everything is now automatic. We'll now go on and see whether ours is approved or not. So go to the home icon. Fine. Click on the home icon. And then here I go there. I go to the procurement and then I go to the suppliers now. So we'll now see whether it must have got stuck also because it has not gone to anybody else. Oh God, it is not showing me anything. My supplier is not shown here long time. Uh, I cannot uh, go to the query by example and then query my supplier actually. Go to the query by example. Oh, this is by export actually. There is no such query by example actually. If I export Excel actually. This is not uh, appearing here at all. And this place is not, uh, previously it was appearing. Fine. Supplier with incomplete setup is not there at all. So I think probably it must have got done. So I will now say, what I'm going to click on it. I will now go to manage suppliers and then query for the supplier. I should not get the right icon. And easy to know. So click on search for one. You should not get the right icon. Yes, I icon is gone. That means what? It is okay. And the I icon has gone. Okay? So the internal supplier approval was causing a problem actually. 
now i will not go to the contacts now fine click on the contacts now go there so click on it why not what happens you know go to create it fine click on bring it to the edit mode now you have to bring it to the edit mode then only what happens you can create a contact now fine click on edit mode and then i'm going to create a contact click on close i was unable to create a contact now i'm going to say ananta this email is required for your uh, what's called your uh, uh supply portal will be giving a realistic mail when we come to the uh, supply portal actually and then go to the action and go to self net i have to have the address coming up on this one yes it's coming previously this address was not coming because it is now gone for internal approval so we have now made everything as automatic thank you for not playing on the you will now see those approvals a bit later when you are looking at the supply portal training so this contact is now residing on this address actually so click on save and close now fine save and close is now done Okay. Save and close, and then we are done it. It is really very tough, na. <laughs> Somebody can say yes now. Hello. <clears throat> How do you feel? This? Oh, that it is not done. Now we go to the site, and then we are now going to create a site. Actually, click on the site. We are now going to create a site. We click on close. site we are going to get a site so click on plus and then we have a drop down you will be getting the address so the address gets replicated a site and then i can override the site name let me override the site name site so these are the two things which has been added up and so the moment you give a save the remaining tab regions will be getting enabled like ebus so click on site you will now find the remaining tab regions are getting enabled The remaining tab regions are getting enabled. Now I will not we will not discuss about it a bit later. Now fine. Go to the site assignment straight away. Fine. This is equivalent to multi org access control of eBiz now. Fine. This is equivalent to multi org access control. Yes, fine. Just click on site assignments and go there. So click on plus. Click on plus. Go there. So the client view is what T zero one is the one fine view tab. The client view is coming. Go there. Shift to location is what I go there T zero one. I will now put the location one over here now. The built location also I will now put it now. Point two zero one. I will now put the built location one. The remaining will be filled with the financials like the liability distribution, the prepayment distribution. All these things will be done by the financials. In fact, what happens? The supply angel will be created only by the financials. So the site assignment has got one association to one B. We can even associate to multiple B U for a multi org access point of equivalent actually of U is not fine as well. So we have only one B U. And then go there. So click on save and close. By which what happened? The site is now created. The site is now created. The changes are saved. So we got the site created actually. So if you go there, there is no error at all. Fine. Click on the contacts. The contact is also there. And then the site is also there. The address is also. There. So this completes the supplier creation actually. And then if you have a save and close or a submit button, we have to submit it. Fine. Click on submit. The changes are saved. Done. So the supplier is ready. Now what you are going to do is the system has already what happens? The interface to purchasing. Okay, if you go to the duplicate now, fine. You can now see the system has already interfaced to the requisition area now. So I go to the supply chain execution and go to the supply orchestration now. Supply orchestration. And then if you go there and then how? Look at it. Fine. Go to the manage supply lines. The system has already what happens? Interfaced to purchasing. If you know the supply number, you can put it. Otherwise, what happens? You can even query on the item number. Also. Item is starting on what? T zero one eight now. Item starts at T zero one eight. So if you have the min max batch number, you can put it. Or otherwise, the item number starts. You can search now. Fine. We'll be having it. So we have a what happens? Solve the problem of the uh, what happens? The two errors on the accounting now. Fine. One is what? Your charge account as well as your variance account. Thank you, Paul. The charge account and variance account has been done. So, document number one thousand one has been created. It has been interfaced to purchasing as a procurement. We'll now go on and see the status of it. Okay, right click and then duplicate. We'll now see the requisition status. Actually, we are now going to convert this into a purchase order. So, go to the procurement and then here, what happens? I go to the purchase orders. Okay, go to the procurement and then this time I go to the purchase orders. And then in Ebus we have an area called auto create. So there is an equivalent area in uh, what happens in uh, infusion also. There is an uh, area called auto create. 
So we have an equivalent area in uh, evils also, in fusion also. That is called process requisition. The auto create area of evils is equivalent to what the process requisitions on the purchase order. If you click on the task list, right, you'll now see process requisition. So click on the process requisition and you click on it. You're going to have a look. At it. You can now see. We are now going to query the 1001. Since we have already made this as an automatic, so it would have got approved automatically. The 1001 would have got approved automatically. It is now submitted on the date. Go, go to the requisition number, 1001 is the one. And then remove the buyer and then query. In emails also, we will now remove the buyer and query. So click on search now. So once when you search for it, it will now show you that this requisition is now available in the automatic auto, auto criteria. So the two lines of requisitions are come over here. So we will now convert this into a purchase order. Right? Select this line in the left hand side. And then with a the control, select the second line also. Both the lines are getting selected in one way. Add to document better. Exactly similar to what we have in EVs. Right? So in the process requisition area, which is nothing but your auto grade area, there you'll be finding these two lines now. Find that. So select it and go there. Click on add to document builder. Add to document builder. I'm going to add it to the document builder. It will be getting added only now. So here we will be discussing about it a bit later. Fine. As of now, you are okay. Fine. This will be discussed a bit later now. Fine. So when you are coming into purchasing, and wait. So in this area, in the auto document builder, on this area of this screen, fine. Simply click on okay and nothing else. Will be coming to a bit later. So here over there, click on it and then click on create. I am not going to get a purchase order. Fine. Click on create. I will be getting a purchase order. So click on it. I will be converting this document builder into a purchase order. Actually. The purchase order is created. The purchase order is not having any supplier at all because the incoming source, the inventory has not specified from which supplier you have to buy it. Fine. It is also not automated. We can even automate it. We will now see everything on the purchasing area. And so when you go into the purchasing. So nothing has been specified on the inventory. And so it will now create a purchase order without a supplier. Actually. The system will be creating a purchase order without a supplier. The document purchase order 2000 is now created. 1000 is the start of this. And you can have a requisition number. If you click on the hyperlink of the requisition, it will not show you the requisition. It is an approved requisition. It is an automatically approved requisition. A requisition is nothing but a representation of a demand now. The demand has come from purchase by inventory, inventory replacement, okay? and then it is now pushed via SCO into the purchasing area. You can also see it's all approved, actually. And you're able to see the two lines over here. And it's not approved. I'll click on done off and come on up. So that requisition is now approved. Now, what happens here? We have one extra specific facility available when company is this one. We can verify whether everything is okay or not. So, what I go to the actions and then go to validate. So, this validate function is available only on fusion purchase orders and not on EBIS. This validation is available only on fusion. So, click on validate now and go to validate. It will say how many errors are there. Supplier is missing, first of all. Supplier on the PO is missing. So we can very well validate the purchase order for all the missing information. This facility is available only in Fusion. It is not available in EBIS basically. You must provide a value for supplier attribute, supplier, etc. etc. The value of the attribute is not valid. All these things are coming actually. Take a moment. You can say one more thing. Accrual account is missing now. Fine. Accrual account is also missing. Fine. Let us now put the supplier over here. Fine. E01. So let me put the supplier. Supplier is not there. Built location is not there. So let me put the built locations. It's not coming. Once when they put a supplier, supplier's built location is coming because in the site assignments of the supplier, we allow provide the built location is not coming automatically. And give a save now. And then you will now go on then again validate. Now we need to set up the accrual account also. The charge and variance accounts are required for the requisition, whereas the charge, variance, and accrual, three accounts are required for your purchase order. Actually. So give a save now. And then we will now see the accounts on this. Okay? Now you see. The accrual account is missing. Now, while saving itself, it is not saying not only validation, while saving itself, it is saying accrual is not there. Go down and then have a look at it. Okay, no, accrual account is missing. No, go down. And then here, no, go to the distributions. This is basically a sub inventory distribution as well as accounting distribution. Fine, select them and click on edit now. Fine, click on edit. I go to the distribution. It is a sub inventory distribution and accounting distribution exactly like EV is not fine. There's no change at all. Company EV is not fine. You can see the charge account is coming. The variance account is also coming, but accrual is missing it. So go there. So accrual has to be provided. So purchase orders needs a charge account, the variance account, as well as an accrual account. Whereas requisitions need only charge account and variance account. So click on OK now. Fine, go that point. Click on OK. 
and now wait for two more minutes i will now complete this process now fine <laughs> no I, click on validate it will again show us the error no if you validate it it will show you the clear error while saving itself it show the error my dear validate now also now let us now set up this now and if you want to know fine we'll now set up the accrual account if you want it and now go on the sort of that one you go to the setup and made announce and then here i will now go to the manage mapping set again now so go to the drop it down i go to the manufacturing and then i will now go to the manage mapping set now and manage percentage map percentage set percentage in the entry now and manage mapping set of cost accounting and what that one you know go to make it and go to the manage mapping set and then here i will now set up the accrual account and accrual account accrual is a big one we have to reconcile also we will now see the reconciliation along with the payments basically so accrual account organization is the one and i click on it i am not going to add it everything is all financials but uh, you have to learn this also fine sometimes we cannot define everywhere in the financials you know select it and then go that i will not accrual is basically a liability account fine that 1001 is our liability account fine click on plus no fine i am going to put it go that one i will not put what 1000 then i put 1001 i will not set as a default for all the orgs fine if the customer wants for each and every org a separate accrual is required you have to send up otherwise what happens you can send to all the org and what not so click on save and close by which it will not happen now i will now rebuild the accounts on the purchase order i'm going to edit purchase order and what not i will now rebuild the accounts go on and then here i will now go to click on edit now if you edit it what happens it won't see accrual is not there so let me rebuild it because we are already set up the accrual account on the management fix and that put actions and then go to rebuild accounts so once when you rebuild accounts the accrual will becoming automatic you know no come now if you validate you won't be having any error at all thank you for not finding that you know validate so go to actions and then go to validate you will not find any errors at all <clears throat> no errors are warning font so this validation function is available only in fusion it is not available in us at all and that too only for purchase orders and not for requisitions requisitions cannot be validated whereas purchase orders can be very well validated there are a lot of things on the accounting we'll be seeing it during purchasing i click on submit so the 2000 has been submitted for approval and that is going to be going to go for automatic approval click on it is automatic approval and then go there i will now go and then click on done now now we'll now go to the manage orders and then make it check and go to the manage orders and then query for 2000 2000 and go query and click on search if such for it it now say it is not approved pending approval is coming if you click on the hyperlink on the pending approval it will not say with whom it is pending actually but it will not be pending with anybody actually it is not built it actually it has to come as open now in uh, fusion every approved purchase order will be shown as open whereas in ebus it will not showing as approved whereas requisition will not show as status of approved whereas purchase order will not show as status as open now. purchase order will not show as status as open so if it comes again pending approval it has to show me where exactly is pending now it takes some time actually it shows the one thing that still showing as a pending approval it has to show me as a approval action details are not available actually approval action not taking place actually you can search yeah it is now open open means what it is fully approved actually so so with this we complete today's session actually if you are agreeing that it is a tough one can you put a green tick now fine if you say it is not a tough one you can put a x mark <laughs> cd himself is saying it is tough now if you feel that it is not at all tough you can put a x mark you know see anybody is putting a x mark or not <laughs> or he is also saying it's tough actually we have to set up all the approvals actually fine uh you all been experienced on ebus and so what happened they have now added more approvals now fine the spend authorized approvals the internal change approvals all those approvals as this percent properly we'll be having a look at it at a greater level when you're going into supplier court like say if you say it's all okay it is nothing difficult you can put a x mark now i want one x mark now you know see whether anybody is now comfortable on this or not <laughs> pavan sunit if you're saying it's really tough what happens you can want to put a, a green tick mark green tick mark means what you're agreeing that it is tough actually good then fine yeah in the bottom what happens in the participants pane we have a, what's called a reactions pane uh, great then we will now call it a day and then we will now meet on monday at 8 am india thank you na okay yeah
ഭയ നോ അതാണ് ഇൻഫോർമേഷൻ ഫോർ ദ മാതിരി ഐ ആം ഓൺലി മീറ്റിംഗ്